Bro, we got time here unless your dog's pounding on the door. Well, let's let's get a, a, a good... The Darby Allen match. I really liked the Darby Allen match with Jungle Boy. And, and I was talking to, again, a, a virtual session right before this, actually. And it surprised me, actually, because he was like, you know... He asked me if there was, you know, certain characters and stuff in wrestling that I like right now. And I was surprised that one of my first answers was Darby Allen. In that he's someone who initially... I would have had a predisposition to not like. I do have a size bias. I just know because I'm older and I'm used to bigger people. And for some reason, the more gimmicky, face-painted characters of today, even though Road Warriors and Sting were I was a big mark for, I like less. But the dudes really won me over. And I don't know what it is, but the presentation, the, the qual I don't know. But there's something that's really working. There's with- nobody like him. Well, there's there's nobody like the Fiend either or the Alexa Bliss thing, but he's got a uniqueness, but it's working. And I would think that someone whose initial thought when I first saw him was, I'm not going to like him, and I like him, anyone that had a more open mind than me is going to love the fucking guy. But what I really liked in the match, and, and again, I talked earlier about having emotion and, and feeling invested – They started the match with some good wrestling. It's like, hey, this is good, and I'm watching it. And they did that tremendous spot. And again, of all the spots they did in the match, the one I liked the most was just when they popped each other with their shoulder showing attitude. Darby did the big, you know, springboardy arm drag thing and got a little cocky. And Jungle Boy took him down and went for the the little snare trap thing, and, and Darby had to get to the ropes. And Jungle Boy got at him and got in his face and got cocky. And then they sort of bumped shoulders and bumped chests with a, you know, come on, motherfucker. And it was like, that was that moment where it's like, shit's on. And it's like, I sit forward on the couch a little bit to pay attention. It's like, man, these two guys are going to fight. And it took that match to a next level. And it's like all the other, you know, coffin drop this, dive this, stupid shit that. It's like, that was all fine and great. But it's like, they brought that attitude and they made me care. Because it's like, I felt like both people were in there to not just have a wrestling match, but to prove something. And I, I thought it was really excellent in that regard. Now, the one thing, there's two things I would have changed in the match. Before I get to that, I want to talk about the wrestling at the beginning. Yep. I was so impressed with the wrestling at the beginning of this match because it was so old school. These headlock takeovers and Jungle Boy, I'll get heat, I'm sure, for this, but doing the deep Ricky Steamboat arm drags. I mean, that fucking guy got so deep under there with those arm drags, and I was just... And you think about these two guys, and like, one of them, I think Darby's 28, I think Jungle Boy is maybe 23, but, what is it, 2021, Jungle Boy is born in 98, or whatever, 99, (laughs) and you don't imagine, and then you think of like, you know, Darby does his skateboarding, and he falls off shit, and he does coffin drops, and all this crazy stuff, you don't anticipate that a match between these two very young wrestlers is going to be like a clinic of old-school, technical, headlock, takeover, arm drag wrestling. But it was, and it looked fucking awesome. Oh, it was crisp, but it was fast, and it was tight. It was great. It was awesome. It was awesome. But And and that's where, and it's it's something that I mentioned in my coaching, that that Bret Hart was so great at. And I always reference the the uh, Piper-Bret match from A.N.E. 8. That... The first part of that match, they were two baby faces wrestling a match trying to win. And I don't remember the spot, but there's a spot where Piper gets the better of heart, and you can tell his pride got kicked in here. And then the attitude changed of, okay, no more Mr. Nice Guy. It's like, I'm winning this fucking thing because I want to show this guy up. And that's what Darby and Jungle Boy did. They gave us some great... Uh, actually, I would imagine the technical wrestling was better than Piper and, and Brett because Piper was not a technical genius, let's just say. Um, no disrespect to the man. He was awesome. But uh, his technical grappling was not his strength. But it's like we went from the sport to, man, there's some attitude behind this. And, and it really helped. And I think, too, they did a good job of showing, and they weren't the only ones. AEW does it uh, frequently, that... Doing wrestling and your basics and your fundamentals, it isn't sitting in a headlock for five minutes. Like, I don't want you to work a hold for five minutes. It's boring. 
But you can do this basic stuff, this fundamental stuff, the headlock takeovers, the arm drags and stuff. If you do them crisp and tight and you keep the action moving, you can hold fans' attention with some good quality wrestling. And they did that. And it was the main event, no less. And and I really liked it. The, the, the one thing I would have changed is the Sting Luchasaurus spot. Like, I just thought that was so out of place and so unneeded. Now, you needed to get rid of the guys because, you know, they needed them gone for the, you know, the post-match. And I was just like, because when they, you know, the, when they're hitting each other, I'm like, why are these guys doing that? And then I thought about it for, again, 30 seconds. And it's like, when they came out and it's Jungle Boy and Darby Allen, it's like, they could have very easily did a quick spot and not a spot, but it's like Sting and Luchasaurus could just look at each other. And it's like, we don't need to be here. We know neither one of us are going to fuck with anybody. Let's just go to the back and let these guys have a match. And it's like they could have just left amicable where Luchasaurus knows he doesn't have to watch Jungle Boy's back because Sting ain't jumping him. Sting's a stand-up guy. Sting doesn't have to watch Darby's back. It's not Team Taz out there. It's Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. And they could have just left as baby faces with a, let's let these two kids go for it. And they could have left, and then we wouldn't have had that awkward moment of, is Luchasaurus helping Jungle Boy not get counted out? And why is Sting so upset? Because he didn't really do anything. And then we don't have to have these two baby faces slug out this awkward moment. I would have just preferred them leave right at the beginning with, hey, guys, go for it. TNT title on the line. We'll, you know, we'll sit in the back. Well, I would presume that at some point in the very near future, we will have Lucha uh, Jurassic Express versus Sting and Darby. And this was just a way to set it up. Which, listen, I mean, there's... them punching each other for thirty seconds before they leave is not selling that match. <laughs> no, more than but just it's like it. they did something to set up a match down the road. Lance is doing his online coaching service <laughs> as he reviews and critiques the Battle of the Empire. This match is reminiscent of Flair Steamboat. Unfortunately, it's Vic Steamboat and David yes. Flair. Oh, terrible. And then, again, this is what threw me, because that is not a particularly babyface thing to do. I wouldn't say we were both heels, but I, I could argue we were both unlikable. <laughs> <laughs> and to this day. Cardio and lack of interest is a big part. I think Orange Cassidy has told his gimmick from Vinny. Look at the cover of this DVD. It's one of my favorite photos of myself ever taken, and it is absolutely Orange Cassidy. You do vocal. look exactly like Orange Cassidy, just much yes. larger. Yes, and worse. Watch Vinny's head <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> bounce off the mat when he misses this elbow. Face the wrong way. Oh, <laughs> God. Putting your own how, move on How disgraceful you. to put the, the man behind figure four in a figure four. This was really well done here at the end, though. You hit this so dead perfect in the middle. Not that chop, though. No. No! You need the flailing. Because there needs to be energy to the spot because it's supposed to be fun. The crowd wants to be excited, so someone has to display energy, and it's not going to be the man in the ring. <laughs> oh, no, you. don't do that. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you fool! I got a little else to say. It's not very good. I miss chopping people. Wasn't the best match of all time. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you got five stars. Could probably take some lessons from Miz on how to work. Oh, get out of here. If you're out there listening and you would like Lance to uh, review one of your matches, much like he did to ours here, how do they do this, Lance? They can email me at swavirtualtraining at gmail.com. As I mentioned, the price is uh, 125 US for a single session, uh, 300 for three. So again, swavirtualtraining at gmail.com. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.